Hello my friend. I was really pleased to get some feedback about what I've been saying here and I'm very glad to talk about the tension that arises between our desire to reach our own full potential and um, being in relationship to somebody else. It's certainly been a quest throughout my own life to balance those two things against each other but it's never an easy thing to do. It's hard enough to balance out your own life but to balance out your life <clears throat> in relation to another person at the same time makes it that much harder. But I think it is something well worth doing and a really important thing to um, to live well and to get your life right. <clears throat> Clearly living all alone or isolating yourself from other people is never the solution. <clears throat> it makes you just completely self-absorbed and can make you very egocentric. Having said that, taking the time to clear the decks and to come back to yourself, as I've said elsewhere, is fundamental. You can't love another person and you can't be in relationship unless you are prepared to do that. But that also means that when you are in relationship, if you are in a close relationship, you need to allow each other to do that, and not just allow, but encourage each other to do that. So each needs to have solitude and each needs to have time to reflect and come back to themselves and find their own inner sense of passion, their own inner sense of who they are and who they want to be. So when you can do that and you allow each other the, the freedom and the elasticity to keep yourself going, then you come back to each other in a much better way. When I work with couples, this is always what I get them to do first of all. I get them to come and talk to me privately, quite on their own, and then to talk to me privately in front of each other so that they learn to balance their inner needs with communication with the other and they balance their sense of criticism of the other with a greater and growing sense of respect and understanding for where the other person is actually at. Now, if you can do that, if you can be as open to yourself as you are to the person you love, then inevitably out of that grows a much closer relationship and a much more harmonious one with that. And that's an everyday thing, you know, that's never acquired. You can never take it for granted. You can never say, oh, we've been together for five years now, so we don't have to do that anymore. That's nonsense. You're with yourself, hopefully, for 80 or 90 years, and every day you have to clear the decks and come back to yourself and remove all the obstacles and think about where you went wrong with other people, where you made mistakes, and be honest with yourself. Well, that same process has to happen with the other person you're close to. And it doesn't matter so much what each of you want, as long as you have a common objective and a common project, a joint project in life. And when you do, you find a way to come together and that, and you find a way to support each other and to mould your lives around that common objective, gradually coming closer with that and therefore finding it easier to take into account both the realisation of your own potential, the realisation of the couple's potential and the realisation of your partner as well. But it takes time and it takes commitment to listening as much as to speaking your mind. And that's the key to it. Listening to yourself, finding inner calm, and then come to the other, not from an attacking point of view or from a perspective of criticism, but from a perspective of finding a joint respect and a joint way forward in life and that is well worth doing.
Good luck with that.